meet yourself. The fact is that you were born perfect. The good girl to the bad bitch transformation. It is the ultimate cure-all for everything that you're experiencing, everything you want to fix, and all that you want to accomplish. This means becoming absolutely narcissist proof. This means aligning with your true passions, your true desires, and making that come true. This is the pathway towards personal mastery. When you master yourself, when you conquer yourself, you conquer the outer world. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing right now, what your family background has been. It's really about the power that you allow yourself to tap into. This power is self-belief. Maybe you've been doing a lot of research on narcissists. You want to make sure that you don't trust the wrong person. You don't want to be betrayed. You don't want to be abandoned. But if you only look at externally what other people are doing, they can easily manipulate you. When you become secure and concrete in understanding your true values, who you really are, what you really want to create, and you focus in that sense of self, there's not really another way to describe this. It's a very spiritual experience to know what the sense of self feels like. When you have that, you become invincible. It doesn't matter what you're in, you feel determined to create a better future for yourself and for your family. It doesn't matter what trauma you experienced or how your family treated you. Maybe you've been scapegoated really badly. It doesn't matter what you experience. When you cultivate that sense of self, you overcome ridiculous obstacles. You create miracles. You create the most amazing outcome that you once as an oppressed, abused, hurt person who felt very, very small, could never imagine you could become. How you achieve your sense of self is the foundation of the good girl to the bad bitch transformation. That's why when you read Bad Bitch on Top, the first thing that we talk about here is ambition. Knowing your ambition, then you cultivate faith. You start moving forward, knowing your strength. Those are all areas of knowing yourself. Those are areas of how you cultivate your sense of self. It's counterintuitive because people think that success is something you chase after, something that you fight for. And there's definitely that masculine, or we call it the young energy that comes with success. But what allows that young or the masculine to create the outcomes that you want, the abundant surplus outcome, is that you must balance it with the yin. The yin is nurture, is receptivity, is community, is belonging. This is a crucial part of success that often gets neglected. And that's why you see people who rush to the top oftentimes falter. They cannot maintain or sustain it. They self-sabotage, they sacrifice their health or they sacrifice their most important relationships. And then they end up with deep scarcity. You cannot cultivate your sense of self by rushing and fighting against. You cultivate your sense of self by experiencing the kind of feeling, the space, the feeling of being held that you would have experienced if you had a healthy, loving mother. It's a very feminine energy. It's a very feminine, nurturing experience. And when I say feminine, I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about how we as humans, based on our societal and family structure, understand and experience this energy. Typically, we ask of our mothers, and it is our mother's role to be the first to show us by holding space and loving and caring for us what we deserve. And that deservingness is your worth. That is the foundation of your worth. And that worth becomes your sense of self. Your sense of self is having standards. 
your standards are ruling your life right now. It's who you invite into bed, is what you eat, is how well you take care of yourself, and the standard of living, that your money situation, all of these things are standards. You are living the standards that you believe you deserve and you are allowing this to happen. Now, obviously, if you're in a war-torn zone, this doesn't apply. I'm speaking to people who have relatively a peaceful environment, but you are perhaps having a lot of struggles or rumination or having a really tough time with your own mind, having a lot of fears when it comes to achieving what you want. You may be struggling with your parenting. These are symptoms. They're symptoms that show you that you lack personal power. And the personal power comes from your sense of worth and your sense of self. It's about knowing yourself, knowing what you deserve and creating the standard of abundance. I wanna clarify that the good girl to the bad bitch transformation is a nurturing experience. You have to heal your feminine energy. You have to heal your femininity, your ability to receive love compliments, deserving, comfort, ease. These are all aspects of feminine energy. Any workaholics here, I bet lots of workaholics watching this, you are a magnet to narcissists because what does a narcissist expect you to do? To bend over backwards, take all the responsibilities, do all the work while they benefit from you. And when you are a overworker, that's your programming, then you don't deserve comfort and ease. You can never create it because that's not your standard. And because you're always overworking, you do not have peace. And only in peace, you're able to reflect and look at what's going on, what's truly going on in your life and your relationships. You do not have time for assessing. Why is it that when there's oppression, the first thing you're taking away is time? It's time because when you have time, you realize your worth. You think about what's going on. You have time to reflect and look at school systems, corporate cultures. They all work the same way. They control your time and that's how they control your mind. And if you are that type of person who likes to subject themselves to overworking, you are a magnet to toxic relationships because this is what happens. You become enmeshed and you don't have time to think. You're delivering, you're giving, you are fully immersed and you do not stop to reflect. And while that might create some tangible financial results, it becomes unsustainable and too easy for you to make mistakes. The good girl is a servant to other people's needs and creating their dreams into reality. Okay, And I don't mean that when you're working for a corporation, you're a good girl. No, that's not what I mean. Because a corporation's value and what they're creating can be fully aligned with what you want to create in this world. That alignment matters. And so if you're in alignment, you're getting paid well, and you are having good reciprocity in this relationship, then you can be a bad bitch being in corporate. Okay, let's not get that wrong. But the good girl is a servicer. The bad bitch is a queen. She's a collaborator. She's a contributor. And when you become the bad bitch, you own your world. You own your time. You own yourself. And you make decisions from that place. Whereas a good girl, she throws herself like a, like a doormat and lets people walk over. And when she lacks sense of self, she can't change because she can't invest in herself to create the outcome. And then so the good girl will often go to therapy. Therapists, every therapist's career is it exists because of good girls. Because they're teaching good girls how to cope. Not how to fix it, but how to cope better in that stress. Tell me when is the last time you went to therapy and the therapist What did they teach you? How to cope. Almost every therapist that I have met were either good girls or good boys, or they're the exploitators who have got into the place because they love the supply. Being able to control traumatized individuals, getting them to come back over and over again. 
What you want when you go to therapy is freedom. You want the bad bitch freedom. You want to go from the good girl to be the bad bitch. Whereas you go to therapy and they teach you how to cope. You try to be a better communicator with your toxic boss, with your colleague, with your husband. They teach you how to do that. And then you go do that and it might work for a little while. Still treating yourself like disposable, unworthy, socially adjusting to everybody, being everything for everyone else and nothing for yourself. You be everything for everyone else, you won't, you won't have anything left for yourself. This is coping. This is prolonging the problem, trying to make it work, trying to keep harmony where no one else has to change except for you. The bad bitch is a leader. She delegates. She looks at what is the best way to achieve a collective goal. And she'll put that into motion. She has a voice. She's seen. She's heard. She's magnificent. That's who you have to become. And when you are that person, the narcissist may try with you, but it doesn't work on you because love bombing doesn't work. Okay, the good girl's weakness are compliments. The bad bitch understands this already. She understands the laws of power and compliments don't work on her. Love bombing doesn't work. Breadcrumbing doesn't work because you can't breadcrumb a queen. But the good girl will fall for that. She's starved. The bad bitch has a community. So she'll talk to her community about whatever's going on with this new narcissist. And the community will say, wow, this is, they're healthy people. They're emotionally intelligent people. That's the community. The good girls community is full of people who are emotionally unintelligent. They can't give advice. In fact, they will say, oh, this is so wonderful. So romantic, must be a good boss, must be a good boyfriend. This is a catch. And they'll encourage the good girl to go for that toxic relationship or to go for that culture to remain there they will encourage the good girl to make bad decisions. Whereas the bad bitches community are wise and emotionally intelligent people. Because sometimes you can get confused. Nobody is perfect. But the people you have, they're your sounding board. And they want your best interest. And they're there for you. The good girl can't collect emotionally intelligent people because she'll con constantly sabotage these healthy relationships. They don't have good social elegance. They stress people out. She can't emotionally regulate. These people can't deal with somebody immature like that. She can't have difficult conversations that are important to maintain a healthy relationship. She actually doesn't know how to maintain healthy relationships for long term. So she'll drop out, she'll ghost people, she'll avoid them. She doesn't really make the effort necessary to maintain a healthy relationship because she doesn't know what that is. This is why oftentimes, you know, we have a community and people want to go from the good girl to the bad bitch. I encourage you to join that community. Look in the link down below. Read the book because you need it. If you're on this journey, you're on a spiritual path because this is all about undoing your conditioning. How did a good girl become like this? In case you're starting to feel like, oh, I don't feel good, she's calling me out. No, these are your coping mechanisms. This is how you learn to cope in your childhood, and this is how you continuously cope in adulthood. This is not who you are. This is why this transformation is spiritual. It's not who you are. It's who you had to be to cope in your childhood, to make sure your family of origin runs the way it was already running and it runs better after you came in so they now that now the bad bitch is somebody who truly doesn't allow the past to control her i will do another video of who i used to be you'll be shocked who i used to be you wouldn't be able to look at this woman and imagine this completely helpless vulnerable traumatized version that is my past self. Because when you shed your coping mechanisms, this is the true self that emerges. And this is a transformation that you must go through. Instead of countlessly reading books, countlessly watching videos, looking for hyper-vigilant red flags, 
those things, knowledge is power. So no knowledge is bad as long as it's real knowledge. It's good knowledge and it's the truth. But when you do that, when you do that, you're not focusing on your transformation. You're focusing only on looking at others. It's again, it's very externally focused. You have to look at what part of me is conditioning and who is my true self. And as that unleashes, that bad bitch comes forward, your life changes, your money skyrockets, your relationships get better, you have better people, you're, more, you're much more charismatic, your social media influence will grow, all of these things will happen. But if you keep focusing on the narcissist or the toxic boss or a stressful job or not being validated at home or you know your husband or somebody, your kids being, being a, a nutcase and you're stressed out constantly, then you're not creating your reality. You have to take the transformation from you, the epicenter, be the leader who shapes your environment, who leads people to, who guides them to make the right decisions in their lives. You gotta lead everybody. Whoever has the most awareness is always a leader. It's not gender, it's not age, it's whoever has awareness. Whoever has wisdom is capable of leading and that is who you're required to become. The other aspect that's tied to having a true sense of worth is urgency. And I'm not talking about this capitalistic urgency that is very stressful. This type of urgency is more, it's, it's tied to the feeling of deserving. And when you deserve something, you want to change it. Okay. For example, if I, you know, I have a certain standard of living. So if my bed sheet is dirty, I need to change it right away. I'm not going to wait till next morning. Um, if, there, like, if I detect crumbs on there or something like that because I have a clean standard, okay? That's an urgency. That's not like this push energy that is a, a very, um, it, it's almost like it's crippling. That's, that's what I call the capitalistic urgency. What I'm talking about here, the urgency is, is emergence. It's I am deserving of comfort, of ease, of love, of nurture. And so you take actions immediately to make changes happen. When you look at the good girl, she has extremely high pain tolerance and this is her problem. She stays with really bad relationship, bad toxic cultures, sometimes so desensitized that she doesn't realize that she's been in this, that this is not a good environment for her. It will take her a really long time to realize this. Or the bad bitch already noticed because why? She has a sense of self. She has a healthy sense of self. She notices it and she decides to do something about it. And it's not going to be two months down the road. It's going to be now. The longer you wait, you have little voices in there. The good girl voice telling you you're going to be saved at some point. It's going to get easier or whatever, whatever. The bad bitch will have none of that. You take your life into your own hands you make it happen and that's what creates a transformation that's what creates your reality in record time what did you think of this video let me know put some comments down below where are you in your transformation did this video make sense to you did you already realize this is your sense of self is what you need to cultivate to make aligned decisions and create aligned abundance surplus reality have you already thought that before i would love to know if you're ready to go on the spiritual pathway to becoming your true self, the bad bitch inside and unleash that version of you forward to create an aligned life, then go down to the description, read the book if you haven't yet, join our free community and consider getting coaching with us, part of the community group. And this is your new bad bitch community that's going to be your counsel. Your transformation starts here. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next video.